All right, so these videos are going to be a little different than what we're used to on this channel. Um, the real goal of my channel is to give a voice to the voiceless. Those that society might have forgotten, those that society consider outcasts, I want to give a voice to them. Um, I want to give them a chance to tell their stories, hopefully um, humanize them, you know. So the next couple stories you're going to be seeing um, are videos that I shot a little over a year ago with a couple friends of mine that were certified and sentenced to life in prison as juveniles. They were juvenile lifers. Up until a couple years ago, um, Pennsylvania passed a law a couple years ago that said if you were under the age of 18 you were sentenced to life in prison you came home when you were dead you came home in a casket all right now they recently passed a law saying that uh, that's unconstitutional because it's been proven that our brains don't stop developing or don't fully develop until we're at the age of 25 um, I was one of those kids at the age of 15 certified as an adult and thrown into that mix into adult prison penitentiary all right so some of these stories you're gonna be seeing um, are those stories I think about it now when I was 15 look you couldn't tell me nothing I thought I knew everything and was you know was a genius um, but now that I have kids that are 14 years old and I look at them and I realize at that age I didn't know nothing um, I was completely lost so I hope you enjoy these stories um, and they're, I'm going to keep them coming. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoy them. All right? Thank you. Ready? No. What's your name, brother? My name is Dwight Whetstone, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Uh, Abdul Rahim. How old are you? 40. 40. You give us a brief background growing up, what your family life was mm -hmm. like. Um, I grew up in North Philly. Uh, Area Avenue in, in particular. Uh, my family was typical to what was going on down North Philly. Um, I broke at home. Uh, my father separated from us when I was young from my, from my mother. Um, my mother was um, was on drugs, real bad, real heavy. Uh, so bad and to the point where um, the state uh, gave custody uh, of me and, me and my four brothers to my grandmother. And um, we moved uh, from one part of Erie Avenue to another part of Erie Avenue. And um, that was when I started to be, get a little more exposure to uh, the streets uh, if you, uh, as I was growing up on Park Avenue Pike. Uh, the streets is more, became started becoming more prevalent to me uh, as, as it was uh, on Fisi Venere. Typical kid, you know, um, made a lot of stupid decisions, uh, a lot of horrible, horrendous uh, mistakes as a kid, uh, and which it ended up landing me in prison, uh, where I almost served 24 years. How did it feel being sentenced to life as a child? You were 16 years old? Yeah. So mm -hmm. how did it feel being sentenced to life in prison as a 16 year old when normal 16 year olds are worried about <clears throat> getting their driver's license, you're worried about spending the rest of your life in prison? Yeah. Uh, you know, and. I mean, when everything happened, when it happened, you know, I felt I, I let everybody down. I, I let myself down, my mother down, my grandmother, my little brothers, um, my baby sister. I let, I, let, I, let, I let everybody down. And when I finally got to court, and I was facing life without possibly parole, when the reality of that sentence hit me, it didn't hit me until I got to Dallas. And I started seeing uh, a lot of the older men who had life, they were in for 40, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, and actually dying in prison, I seen a lot of guys die with their sentence. So that's when the reality of it hit me, that I was gonna die in prison. That uh, there was no way out for me, and that uh, that was my end. And uh, emotionally, when you're a 16 year old and you're thrown into prison and uh, you're around the wolves and the savages, how, what type of emotional impact does that have on you? Yeah, you, you, you know, that type of environment, man, you gotta, you know, as young as we were, at that time when I got the dollars, I was the youngest inmate in that jail, I was 18 years old. And um, you had to adapt to what was going on. I mean, you couldn't be a victim. Um, 
being the victim one time was, was being the victim forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, 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 you made decisions, man, that was that was typical to the prison. I mean, you had to, whatever the flavor was in the jail, that's, that's the flavor you took, you, you ate from. And um, for a lot of years for me, in the beginning, it was like that. You know, um, but then I realized, you know, it just, it wasn't going to be me. Uh, like the, like uh, we had, the, we talked to Oskina earlier, and he said about, he said one thing that was very, very true, and that everybody in prison can understand that, or anybody who got sense can understand it. That sometimes, or excuse me, um, when you're in prison, whatever is in you is going to come out. If you're thorough, you're corny, you're, you know, you're lame, all the arts will come out. You know, if you're, if you're if you're a religious guy or whatever, it's gonna it's gonna come out. And for me, you know, I you know, I had to let my thoroughness come out. You know, I had to I had to let you know, I had to decompress a little bit and you know, push away my reality and, and let me come out. So I, I start I, I stopped getting involved in the nut, in the nut stuff. You know, what I mean, getting involved in that nonsense. And I started practicing my religion. You know, and um, that's what that's what saved my life. And one thing I can say ever since. I met you probably about 1999, 2000, and ever since the day I met you, one thing I can say is you're one of the most humble, most gentle souls um, that I've ever come across, ever in life. You're you're one of the most genuine and and most humble person that I've ever met. How, and that's one thing that amazed me about you because if you look at you, you're a big brother. You know what I mean? You look at you, you'd be like, man, this is a gorilla. This is a silverback right here. How, how do you do that?